This, this, this is Money Line Mania with Jazz and the Crew. Remember, this segment is also brought to you by Sports Betting Weekly. Check them out every single Thursday moving forward on the World Wide Sports Radio Network. We don't have World Wide West. We don't have the team, but we have the man, Chaz. What's going on, Chaz? I have reached out and talked to a handful of the guys. It's been a busy week for me personally, and therefore, I'm trying to wrap up everything to get started back with our new season. So I do have some nuggets from people, but it's so low tonight for me. However, I've got something that I wanted to talk to you guys about, which is this whole last-minute sports betting thing. I think it could help people. Absolutely. And with sports betting here in New York, it's hundreds and millions of dollars the state is making off sports betting. And why not help everybody every single week? 80% right over the last seven, eight weeks. We're very excited to have you on, Chaz. And thank God we've got some winners. So are you ready? The first thing, Errol, is you made a great point. That number, that 70, 80%, whatever that number is, it sounds great. But if you know what you're talking about, you know that's not enough information. Do you remember my cousin Vinny? Of course. When she says that's a BS question? <laughs> yes. Yeah. A winning percentage is BS. And you see it if you're looking on Twitter or you're on any social media and these guys are spinning out that number. It's BS because you don't have enough information. Again, we talk about it. Hector is a great handicapper. But if he's wrong on one game, on a big favor in soccer, and usually the way you lose at soccer on a big favor isn't that they lose the game. It's that they tie. They have a draw. And in soccer, as Hector has mentioned, it's three-way betting. So if you lose somebody that's minus 400, then you've lost $400 and you're betting $100 on the other three, well, now you are three and one. You've got 75% winners, but you're down $100. And so just be careful. If somebody's spewing winning percentage only at you, don't listen to them. That's absolutely true. And everybody thinks that they're a handicapper out there, and everybody's a sports better now. Here in New York, the beef thinks he's a better. He's won a couple hundred dollars. A couple of weeks ago, he won like $1,500 betting on the tournament and a couple other games, won a lot of parlays, and he bought himself a nice little iPad Pro where he spent $1,500. So you can win some money, and you can invest your money into more wonderful electronics. But why don't we get into the betting? NBA playoffs? Tonight, game four between the Minnesota Timberwolves hosting the Memphis Grizzlies. I want to give a shout out to your buddy because that's the smartest thing to do. I know so many guys that are up 1500 You talk to them three days later, they're down 200 They didn't take out the money. They didn't buy the fancy electronics. So pat him on the back for sure. I'm not patting him on the back. He's a cheapskate. That's why he pulled it out because he didn't want to use his own money to buy his iPad. So why not use his betting money? That's the only reason why, my friends. So one of the things that we talk about is New York, it's legal. It's Saturday night. Listen to the radio right now as you're driving somewhere because you've got an engagement with a significant other or some business function or something where you know you're not going to actually be able to watch the game, you're not going to get involved, so you don't even look at the game, you don't even bet it, you say forget about it, and then at the last minute something changes and you get a cancellation, and all of a sudden now you've got an hour to look at all these games. The first thing I do is I use a website that I can find all the information. Personally, I like covers because they're one of the oldest in the industry, and they're great. And it's simple, covers.com. But what I'll do is I'll have Memphis on one screen, and I'll have Minnesota on the other screen, and I just do a a quick glance. A lot of times, I'm reading you guys these numbers every week because we've already got them written down. But tonight, I had a last-minute cancellation, and I am joining you guys. So we're going to look at Memphis on the road at Minnesota. First thing that jumps out at me is this is game four. That's important, but remember in the old days when the NBA... No matter who played, they won. The home games teams covered. I mean, it literally was that they would win four games to three. The home team would cover every game. And those days were fun because it was pretty easy to bet. Nowadays, it doesn't work like that. So I'm looking at Memphis at Minnesota. The fact is Minnesota's lost two games in a row, but it looks like Memphis is the better team. I did watch a little of that game. Would you guys agree with that statement that Memphis looks like the better team? Oh, absolutely. They've been the better team all season long. The number two seed. We expect them to be as good 
good as they were throughout the season, and they probably have the best player in this series. Now, the one thing I've noticed, because we talked about it the last game, these overs are 240 points. That's a lot of points for an over. You look at the Golden State game we're going to talk about next. Their over-under is 224. When you're betting live action, one of the things I've noticed in my career with live action, and I've been betting live action more than most people because we started with it on Sports Betting Weekly years ago, they don't always adjust the line accordingly. So the other night, this game was at 239, and it started out really slow. If you open up covers, guys, It said they were estimating that the final score was going to be 219 points. If each team scores a run in the first inning of a baseball game, that's two runs. They're going to tell you the final score is going to be 18, which is they just do the math. But they didn't adjust on the line. They still had the line at 237 or 236, which was really close to the original line. So what I did is I bet the under. The way I looked at it is estimated to be 219. They're saying 236. Well, that's a big difference. That's 17 points. The final score was 104 to 95. It was under the number by 39. Guys, it was one of the easiest bets I had ever won. They never even threatened. They had a little period, I think, in the second quarter where they kicked it up a notch, and they're right in the second half. So that's the first thing that's jumping out of me. These last two games have gone under the number, and they're not moving that number any. So what they're saying is they expect these teams to keep scoring, but maybe that's not the case. Maybe Memphis is just so much better than Minnesota that Minnesota is not going to be able to score any points. Which is surprising considering they were the highest scoring team in the NBA and Memphis was second. So maybe that's where these overs are coming from. But yeah, it's weird. They wouldn't have been able to adjust that when Memphis's defense has played very well so far, especially late in the game. Right, but the reason they don't necessarily adjust it is because the people aren't reacting to it. So if the people are going to keep betting the over, and it was 40 points. Think about that. Well, you're going to not change it. I think that total is too high. Then I look at the point spread. Minnesota's getting three at home. Home teams are supposed to win, and they did. Remember, they upset them in the first game. That was at Memphis, and then Memphis came back and, and dominated in the second game, one by 30, basically. This game, I think that 104-95 score, it wasn't as close as that score. No, the uh, Timberwolves blew two 25-point leads in that game. Yeah. If you looked at that game, John from GMF Sports is talking talked about this all year long. Oh my God, the first quarter, one team won by double digits. The second quarter, the other team won by double digits. It's just crazy how the NBA works. It's one of the reasons, God bless his soul, my father said don't bet on basketball because the craziest stuff happens in basketball. But I'm looking at, at, at three and the 232, which is they're showing it. I like Memphis in the under here, but I would not be afraid to say Memphis money line in the under. You know how I have that money line media bet that we made basically just for you guys, which is you bet one unit on the money line and then a fraction of that on the point spread. As long as you win the game, they win the game, you're going to be fine. In this case, I would say my play on this game would be a two-teamer. Now, normally, I'm always going to bet a two-teamer straight. In this case, I've got a lot of action for Sunday. I'm going to go with Memphis on the money line. They just have to win the game and under 232 and a half. And that's a play that I just handicapped right in front of you. Whether it wins or not, guys, we'll find out. I like the Timberwolves in this game. This is a very important game. I like Anthony Edwards. Anthony Edwards is a negative 110 for 23 and a half on the over. I like Anthony Edwards on the over with 23 and a half. I think Anthony Edwards could score 25 to 26 points in this game. D'Angelo Russell right now on the over is 18 and a half, negative 105. I think he scores a little bit more than 18 and a half, so I would definitely bet on that. I really like the Timberwolves in this game. They need this game. The Timberwolves are at home. They lost their first home game. I can't see the Timberwolves losing back-to-back games at home as an offensive powerhouse. So give me Anthony Edwards, Carl Anthony Towns, and the Timberwolves in game number four. What's nice about those personal bets, the player props, you get to have a situation where all that guy has to do is have a good game and you're going to be okay. I have no player props right now for the NBA, but when they get down to the final four teams, and I've seen a, a couple series. 
I'm going to have definitely some player prop action. I like Anthony Edwards in this game. 23 and a half, bet him on the over. And D'Angelo Russell, bet him on the over on 18 and a half. They're going to play a big part. I know Carl Anthony Towns is 24 and a half on the over, negative 105. I'm not going to bet Carl Anthony Towns because one of these guys are going to have to take a step back. And what D'Angelo Russell has done in this series is use his speed to get to the hole and do the things that he is strong at. And I expect D'Angelo Russell to do it again in game number four. So give me the Minnesota Timberwolves and bet D'Angelo Russell and Anthony Edwards on the over. The Golden State Warriors going for the sweep in game four at the Denver Nuggets on Sunday. Wes, who couldn't make it today, told me that he this week bet Golden State to win it all. He got him at six to one. And it was very excited when the Suns left because, really, you got to look at the West. It's going to be Golden State and Phoenix unless something changes. They're going to have to play. So I did the same thing. I'm just doing last minute handicap. And all I see on Golden State is W's. All I see on Denver is L's. The point spread on this game is 4 and 224. So Golden State is minus 175. This is a game where I'm going to make a lot of bets on this game because we have won a lot of money on Golden State, and we've been doing it with Golden State and the over. They have cashed not five out of six games. They have cashed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of nine of their last games. And the over in their last six games, it has been a Golden State and over parlay. It's happened four in a row. If something happens four in a row, I think it's better to assume it's going to happen five in a row. We have talked about the roulette table before, right, with the red and the black. And these people come up and they put all this money on black because it can't be red again. Yes, it can. (laughs) I like Golden State in the over here, but I'm going to bet it a little differently. In the first game, I'm just betting the parlay. In this game, I'm going to do the Golden State money line media special. Take the 175, three quarters of that on the four. If They cover. I win them both. If they win, I'm fine. If they lose, I lose. But I'm going to lose. It's sports betting. You lose. We're going to lose one out of four, maybe one out of five games that we bet. But I'm also going to have that parlay. Everything I do remember is for the first half and for the game. In this case, I don't like the first quarters in these games. Look at what we said about that game where they had the big lead, right? They had a 20-point lead. I just don't like that in the first quarter. We have seen so much this year of the bouncing back and forth of these teams. So I'm going to stick with that. And then at halftime, we'll see where we're at. On both of these games, once I see, remember handicapping is look at what happened in the past and try to apply that to what you think is going to happen in the future. But halftime ain't the future anymore. Halftime is real right now. So at halftime, I'd be willing to, to not hesitate to change a play. You gotta, if you're betting a game and you're only betting the game, called you names in the past. That was wrong of me. It's your money. You should be able to do what you want with it. All I'm saying is you have to understand sometimes you're wrong and sometimes you're right. Either way, you can save yourself. If you're wrong, you bet the other way and you win. If you're right, you keep betting and you cash like we do six or seven or eight times a game.